Welcome everyone to the Directed IRA podcast with Matt Sorensen and Mark Kohler. We are just two nerdy attorneys. Super excited for whoa, today's whoa, episode. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You're, you're going to throw out nerd? Okay. I think we are two kick butt tax lawyers saving money for people around America with their self directed IRAs. There you go. We got a killer topic today. I like nerds, so <laughs> You're bracing also, it. it's also right. a delicious candy. Okay. Um, well, what we're talking about today <laughs> is people. This is super important. The IRA LLC and checkbook IRA is one of the most common self-directed IRA tools that you can have in your toolkit. I love it. It's also the one that people use wrong. They jack it up. And so we want to go over some of the common mistakes people make and set you straight so that you do not run into these issues. And what it may mean with this checkbook IRA, this thing, is if you set up an LLC owned by your IRA, you have opened up yourself to a whole new world of opportunities and cool strategies. But you've also loaded a gun and you've got to be careful <laughs> how you where you point it and you yeah. got to know the rules and know the guidelines and be careful and so we yeah. want to give you all of those little um line, landmines to avoid i guess and yeah. you deal with this every day i'm going to yeah. be color commentary yeah. because you you deal with this crap you know what you know what this is today this episode this is IRA LLC safety class Ooh. IRA LLC safety okay all right okay we do not want anyone to get hurt with the IRA LLC, <laughs> okay? So let's explain what it is. For those of you that may not be familiar, this is an amazing tool, something I even use myself. Mark mm-hmm. uses it um, as we're self-directing our retirement accounts. So as many of you know, if you're this far along in the podcast, you know what the heck a self-directed IRA is. But the IRA LLC, sometimes called a checkbook IRA, is essentially your IRA invests into an LLC. There's multiple variations of this, but let's say I have one IRA that owns an LLC 100%. Your manager of that LLC. That LLC has a bank account. That LLC goes and buys the investments and the LLC holds them. The LLC pays for the investments and gets the income. But you don't own the LLC. The IRA does. Yes. And a couple caveats before we get into what we got a list of five or six things that you don't want to do. But a first big topic to, or thing to cover here is that it's okay to have an IRA LLC. Believe it or not, because of these problems, there's custodians and trust companies across the country that go, you can't do it. We don't want you to do it. We don't allow it. We don't do all, and they make it sound like it's illegal or wrong. No, they just don't have the bandwidth to um, monitor and they don't have law firms they can trust to keep their clients out of hot water. So they just say, carte blanche, IRA LLCs are bad. And they're freaking wrong. You want to use this strategy. You just want to have the safety class first. So don't yeah. <laughs> listen to anybody that says you can't be the manager of an IRA LLC. You can. We've got other podcasts on that. Today is buyer beware of the rules so that you do it right. But we've covered this over and over again. It's in Matt's book. For those watching on YouTube, yeah. it's this beautiful little book over here. Yeah. The Self-Directed IRA Handbook. Learn yep. the rules. Yeah, yep. when anyone ever asks, is the self-directed IRA LLC legal? Well, I have a chapter on it. I, it has like 20 citations to cases on it, okay? People opining and saying they're illegal or you can't use it or people that don't know what they're doing. Are they really attorneys? Like, ask them. I see people that have zero credentials out speaking on this. So um, we've actually done the work. But uh, we want to get into the issues because they are messed up sometimes. Yep. And we want to make sure you know when to avoid them and make sure you're operating it right. If you've got one, we're going to go over this to make sure you're doing it right. Okay. All right. Um, and as we go to number one, I see Matt's little cheat sheet. Like yeah. I said, I'm going to let him be the color. I'll, I'll be color commentary, but he says set up wrong. Mark's the kid in class that cheated off of the guy next to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I own that. I own like, it. <laughs> can I, can I'm not ashamed of that at all. <laughs> How do you think I became a CPA? Are you kidding me? Everybody's like, you're not like a regular CPA. Well, I cheated. Um, no, I did. Okay. Now, on the set up wrong topic, I want to lead with this. You can have multiple members of an IRA LLC. In our example a yeah. couple moments ago, as we were trying to tell you what these are all about, we said your IRA owns an LLC. Well, you can have multiple IRAs. You can have multiple people and IRAs be partners of an LLC. Um, but on the topic of setting up wrong, what are they doing wrong? Matt, what are some of those things that you see? All right. One of the most common things, and we see this in documents, that directed IRA. These are coming from other people, not KQS lawyers, our law firm, because we know what we're doing. But I'd probably say the number one example of what it's done, uh, set up wrong is they set it up like it's a regular LLC. Like mm. just some individual person is going to own it. They went to some attorney that didn't know what an IRA LLC was. Went to LegalZoom. Yeah, they went to LegalZoom or they tried to hack it out online. And what the problem is, 
it's not going to get funded. Your IRA custodian, whether it's us or the 20 other IRA LLC or IRA custodians that let you do an IRA LLC, they're going to reject it because they have requirements that the documents for the LLC have IRA provisions in them. Yeah, we're looking at about 20 plus provisions yep. and that refer to IRS code, Department of Labor regulations. Uh, they kind of set forth the rules of what you can and cannot do. And that's a good thing. It, it, one of the safety <laughs> class issues yeah. here is use an operating agreement that tells you what you can and can't do. That, that is your guidebook. That's your Bible. And if you set up the wrong LLC to begin with and someone does allow you to fund it, uh, and there's custodians out there that don't have the, the yeah. checks and balances. And so all of a sudden you're the, you say, well, my operating agreement said I could do it. Well, just because your operating agreement said, you know, it's the wrong provision. Yeah. So we want, let's say you were audited on this. What you're going to want to do when you go into audit is you want to LLC documents that are clean, right? Tight, tight. Tight. You want to have the operating agreement saying all the right provisions that they're going to be looking for. And then you also are going to want to make sure your bank statements and all those transactions are clean. That's what they're going to look at. Like when you get audited, what does the IRS look for? Paperwork. They want you to send them paperwork, mm -hmm. the LLC documents, and then the bank account statements. That's what's going to be under audit. Yeah. And now I know what some of you are saying. You're going, well, you're saying this just because now we have to use your law firm. You're holding us captive. <laughs> and no, we're not saying that. Go to another law firm. Yeah. That's fine. But here's the we thing. We process tons of IRLCs. It's, I, I'm surprised at how many we do that are other law firms, actually. So Yeah, because we're like, why didn't you call us? We could, yeah. and, and they're more expensive half the time. So, But let's tell you costs, at least what we charge at our firm, so that you say, okay, if I have to use a lawyer, how much is it going to run me? <laughs> Um, so a multi-member LLC, meaning multiple IRAs or people involved, we're around 1500 bucks, yep. right? Mm -hmm. And then for a single member IRA LLC, we're around eight to 900 bucks. Yeah, 800 bucks, you know. Um, and that's, you also have your state filing fees depending on the state. So a lot of states are 50 bucks, 100 bucks. So- And you might be using mail forwarding or a registered agent service. So you got some little bells and whistles that it might be attached, but- People, when you go out and talk to lawyers that know what they're doing, that's really affordable. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I we've had people pay over five thousand dollars for them. I've seen expense payments to other lawyers <laughs> that set these up. So um, so you don't need to pay a lot, but you're gonna need a little, little more than hacking it out on your own. All right. Yeah. So And your IRA can pay the bill. Yeah, just like if you were like, you know, that's some medical treatment you need, or even you're freaking fixing your car. Do you really wanna put your retirement on the line to make sure it was done right? Like you don't know what you're doing. You're doing this the first time for yourself and you want to be the guinea pig for your yeah. own thing. So just get some help, okay? Get it done right. Yeah, let me just quote in Jerry Maguire. Mm -hmm. um, Jerry himself, when he was talking to Cuba Gooding Jr., I always want to say Cuba, but it's Cuba Gooding Jr. Okay. He says, help me help you. Yeah. Help me help you. <laughs> and they're in that the locker room scene. And I just love that scene because as an attorney, uh, you, you're you're trying to beg your clients sometimes to just say, yeah. I'm trying to help you. You, you want yeah. if something goes awry, you're going to come back at me anyway. So mm -hmm. help, let me help you. Yeah, and we'll be affordable. Yeah, and so so this is not we're not trying to be self serving serving again here with a sales pitch, but just saying set it up right, and use a law firm, and we're here if you yeah. need us, and we're cheaper than most firms out there. So shop around. Okay. All right. Number two problem. All right. Number two problem. And this, I'm, I'm editing this one in here because this is at the outset. I want to make sure people understand. The IRA LLC is not a strategy to get around any other retirement account rules, especially prohibited transactions. If you're using an IRA LLC, all the things you can and can't do with your self-directed IRA apply to the IRA LLC. Okay? So you can't be like, well, I'm just going to buy a house and live in it. I'm just going to write myself checks. I'm going to put my college kids in yeah. my IRA's apartment building. Yes, sure. like all those rules still apply. So don't think of the IRA LLC as getting around anything. The IRA LLC is giving you checkbook control so you can manage your investments and the, and the funds going in and out of those deals easier and a little bit of asset protection, okay? That's what the IRA LLC is doing. It's not changing the self-directed IRA rules. Like I had a client a while ago that was like wanting to sell property that they personally own to their IRA LLC. And I was like, you can't do that. Well, but I thought that's what the whole thing was about. No, like, yeah, who told you that? And then come to find that? out, they never had a consult with a lawyer. They right. just thought, oh, a checkbook IRA LLC, cool. Now I can subvert all the yeah. rules. Well, no. luckily they finally got to us, and that then they had the consult, and that yeah. just goes back to the setting it up wrong. Okay, get with someone, and when you do a consult with the lawyer, go over what you're going to do, talk through it. You might get through it and be like, 
yeah, you shouldn't be doing this. That You just saved yourself the headache and the screw-ups. Yeah. So now Kay. I'm just going to throw my yellow pad off the table here. This is ridiculous. I'm trying to cheat off you, and you went from number one <laughs> to was... number six. You know, you got to warn yeah, me. Yeah, gosh. Not, yeah. You know, if I'm going to cheat off your paper. Okay. That's why, so this is know. now number two, and I, I want to repeat what Matt just said. An IRA LLC is not meant to get around the rules, and that's a mistake people go in with. Mm -hmm. So, okay, no, which, which All right. one's number three now? Number three, okay. putting money in wrong. Ooh, okay, when you yeah. have an IRA LLC, remember, you do not own the IRA LLC. Your IRA does. So you still contribute to your IRA, your 6000 a year, or you're transferring more money over from your brokerage IRA to your self-directed IRA. That IRA still owns the LLC. And then you invest the money from the IRA into the LLC. You cannot put money personally into the LLC bank account. You will never put money personally in the LLC bank account. You will never take money out of the LLC bank account personally. You don't own it. The IRA does. IRA is always going to be putting money into the LLC. Now, the which means your, us, which means us, your yeah. IRA custodian or whoever you're using. You got to follow the steps. And and now I will say, if you had a multi-member IRA LLC, mm -hmm. then you may be a partner in that IRA LLC. That's a more advanced topic. You may be putting money in on behalf of yourself, but not on behalf of your IRA. You might have other people's IRAs involved. You might have other people, like just here in our room here, three or four of us might form an LLC, some with IRAs, some with 401k, some with personal money. Everybody is their own person putting in money on their own membership ownership behalf. So just when you start the process, follow the procedure for each one of those people. And I, and I think, in, and what we see, as you said, is people putting in the money in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So you were, right before we started this podcast, you were dealing with an issue. I Which was, one was it? Is I it, was dealing with someone on this next one. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Number four. All right. So remember, get the money in. The IRA is always going to be putting the money in. Okay. And for it's, itself. For itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and yeah. I'm usually talking about here the single member IRA LLC. Yeah. The multi-member ones are a little more complex. You definitely need to have your lawyer involved on those. Yeah. Um, I'm usually talking about the single member, which is 95% of you doing okay. this. Now, money coming out wrong is number four, and let's disclose this client's name and really shame them. Yeah. Can you do that? Yeah. No. We can't do that? No, we don't do that here. Oh, you know, damn it. It's, okay. it's called attorney-client privilege. Yeah, that, you know? were, they were serious about that? Yeah, that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought that was just on the bar for fun. That was like, know? just like a recommendation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, kind of, just kind of a recommendation. Is that like a best practice? <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, well, like don't your, say their yeah. name. So this yeah. is so let's John just, Doe. Yeah. So, so taking money out, remember, you don't own this LLC. Your IRA does. So if you're like in retirement, you're like, all right, I want to start living off of this. You know, my, my IRA LLC owns a rental property. I got some cash flow coming in. And this is the example. And it's like, oh, I just want to start living off this finally. Okay. Well, you're going to send money from the LLC back to the IRA. And then you're going to contact your IRA custodian and take a distribution from your IRA. See, because when you get to take a distribution, right, there's got to be some tax reporting. We need to know about it. We got to update your account. We're going to send a 1099 to you at the end of the year, totaling up all the distributions you take. You're going to report it on your personal tax return. The LLC, you don't own that thing. You don't get to touch it. Your IRA does. You get to touch your IRA. So you're going to send it back to your IRA, whatever amount you want to take. And then you take a distribution from us. So it's a two-step process, but that's how it has to happen. Okay. The, since I'm color commentary, I get to give another example. Okay. What's nice about color commentary is that's where you actually, it makes sense. Matt says it, and then I make sense of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, in my, so in my example, I'm going to use the health savings account. Many of you know that the health savings account can also be self-directed if you've been a listener to our show. Last year, my health savings account bought some cows. I also have a rental Using an LLC. Using an IRA LLC. So it would have been called an HSA LLC, I guess, technically. And I have um, an HSA LLC in, in Illinois that also owns a rental property. So I've got these LLCs owned by my HSA. Now, let's say Molly... Now, I used to use the money from the HSA to pay for Molly's braces. She's now out of braces. Um, so when she had to go to the orthodontist, you would think, oh, this HSA owns the LLC. It's a valid medical expense. I'm just going to write a check from the LLC for medical. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't own that LLC. Molly is not a beneficiary of that LLC. The LLC is not an HSA. It's an LLC. So I learned that 
quickly that I had to do it just like everybody else and follow the same rules is money goes from the rental property rent into the LLC. And then the LLC does a distribution down to my HSA account. Then I go to my custodian, directed IRA, and go, hey, I got some receipts to turn in. I need a reimbursement. And then the HSA kicks out money for Molly's orthodontist bill. So same process, whether you're trying to take an early distribution, a retirement distribution, a HSA distribution, you got to send the money from the LLC down to the account and let the account give you the money. Yep. Yeah. And there's some forms in that. And if you want to set up regular distribution, you can do that too. So you're just going to have to... Remember to send the money back from the LLC to the IRA or HSA. And you can even have recurring distributions too, which a lot of people like to do once they hit retirement. They're like, all right, I want to check once a month or once a quarter. You know, just send me a set amount. And then you just got to make sure the money's over there from the LLC into the retirement account. And it could be Coverdell for education. It could be Roth. It could be traditional. So all that stuff. Now all let's, the say, rules. let's say that you, the IRA LLC owns a rental property and you sell it and you have a bunch of cash now. Well, you can leave it in the LLC. No reason to send that back to That's the IRA. Find another the only investment. reason you send money back to the IRA is if you wanna take a distribution or you wanna transfer the funds somewhere else. Maybe you're like, oh, I want it to go back to my brokerage account that you know TD Ameritrade to trade stocks. Don't wanna day trade. Okay, whatever. So, um, but otherwise just leave the money in the LLC. Love All it. right, just ready, keep it ready for the next investment. Keep the powder dry. Yeah. To go back to the Ooh, gun safety. I like it. You know. Yeah. And I, uh, my, <laughs> or keep it loaded. Yeah. <laughs> my my <laughs> Kohler Dutton Livestock LLC now has money sitting in it from the sale of my cows. Oh. And in, just in time for season four of Yellowstone. And so my LLC is ready to deploy. Is there a new season of Yellowstone? Oh, yeah. Next month. I didn't month. know that. It's coming out next month. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. You better catch up. All right. We've been doing some catch up at night just to make sure we're ready for the next season. Okay. All right. Yeah. I like to do that. Like watch like the last like three or four episodes of the last season just to remember where everything settled. Yeah. I love it. Good idea. Okay. Now I cheated. I looked at your sheet. Okay. I'm liking number five. Ooh. Okay. All right. You want to hit number five? No, I don't. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I get to say it. You can, I can say, say it. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. I like this one because for all of you LLC owners out you there, would. you got to do this anyway. And that is keeping your LLC up to date. What does that mean? Well, this does happen every once in a while is clients will call up and they'll be like, I got this notice from the state <laughs> that my LLC was dissolved and shut down and I don't have one anymore. Oh, did you pay your annual fees to keep the LLC active? Or, or did you hire KKOS company maintenance service to do that for you? Yeah. <laughs> No, no. no. <laughs> was I uh, supposed to? <laughs> was that was that on me? I, I thought you guys handled that. <laughs> no, we will. If, in the law firm, the Kikos lawyers, if you yeah. pay for it. So we do have a service only 150 bucks a year, and we do your renewals for you Ugh. and do your minutes for you. Insurance, so, well spent. So this is a problem, though, for IRA LLCs, because if your entity gets dissolved because you got your head in the sand and you're not keeping it active, that can become a problem. If we In most states, what we're able to do is reactivate it by, you know, your LLC would pay some fees. Um, and then when you get it back in good standing and you're all good moving forward, but if it's gone by so long, you are past the point of recovery and it's very painful. You're going to have to set up a whole new LLC, send money back to the IRA, reinvest it back into that LLC. And, and it's super painful. So yeah. yeah, stay on top of it. I can't emphasize enough to give a plug to our company maintenance plan team. They are just amazing. We call it the CMP team led by Becky Lloyd back at the law firm. She is always available for a quick call to get you in the system. She's got an amazing team and it's so affordable. And, and let me expand on the opportunity here. What was so fun with our, um, we set up a, also a Roth IRA LLC with all the kids mm -hmm. a year and a half ago, two years ago. And so we've got like seven or eight members and we went and bought a crypto mine. And so we got several cards and we're doing some crypto mining through um, uh, hashed, oh, what is it called? Nice hash. Nice hash and our Coinbase account and all that. So we're, we're, we're running wrong in that LLC. We're maintaining the LLC with the state, but here's what's also cool. We get to have board meetings and it is so neat 
to have a Zoom call with all the kids and go, hey, what are we going to do with this LLC next? How's the profitability going? What are we doing? And it's a chance to build a legacy and teach your kids about retirement and get all the kids and the grandkids involved in these LLCs and say, let's do a project together, whether it's real estate or notes or lending or crypto or whatever it is. And now you can't pay, let the LLC pay for a trip to the Cayman Islands for your board meeting. There's none of that, but you can easily have a Zoom call every quarter and talk about what the LLC is doing. Guys, I've had clients that set these up just to teach their kids about retirement. They're like, oh, I'm getting a great rate of return, but it, I could have done it on my own. I wanted to get a multi-member LLC to get the family involved. Oh, so cool. Yeah. But maintain that, it. Yeah. Have your meetings. Absolutely. And yeah. the company Keep maintenance team will give you a list. Yeah. The other thing on keeping it up to date is you want to let your IRA custodian know the value on an annual basis. So just a directed IRA, we have a self-certification form you can fill out that says, hey. Every January. I, I, yeah, it, yeah. So you want to do it for year end. So as of December 31st, what was the value of my LLC? And we update it on your account, which keeps good records for the IRS to see your account hopefully going up in value. And also it helps you with your statements and knowing where the heck you're at. Yeah. So um, but there's just a worksheet you can fill out. You don't need to go get appraisals and all that, but there's a worksheet you can fill out and some processes we have there. So that's called your annual valuation and it directed. And I don't, a lot of the companies don't do this. We have a easy to use self-certification worksheet you can do. It's online, simple. Yeah, and, th and think of it like this way. If you have an IRA over at TD Ameritrade, they're gonna send you the value of your IRA at year end and they can easily do it because everything's in stocks, bonds, yeah. mutual funds, ETFs, but yeah. not here. Yeah. It, we don't know what it's in. You've been investing it, not us. And so you have to self-certify what the value is. Don't stress about it. It's just a valuation. Yeah. If it owns a rental property, just go to Zillow and see what the Zillow estimate is. Tell us what your bank account was at the end of the year and then send us that. It's easy. That, for most clients, it's very simple. If you got a crypto wallet or something, what was the value of the crypto on December 31st? You know, that's easily, you can search that and find it fast. All so right. now keeping it up to date, if you do have a multi-member LLC, that means tax return. Because the IRS on that SS4 form that you filled out to get the tax ID number, you checked a box, multi-member. All of a sudden the IRS is like, whoa, whoa, our, our computer system said, you got a multi-member LLC, who are the members? We don't know who the members are. They may not all be IRAs. They may not all be Roths, we don't know. And so you may say, well, my IRA doesn't owe taxes. True, but the IRS doesn't know who all the other members are and what you're doing. And your IRA may have to do a tax return. I'll let Matt comment on that. But, mm -hmm. but at the LLC level to maintain it, You've got to do a tax return if you have multiple partners. And it, it can be zero activity. It could be a simple form, a, a 1065, talk to your accountant. If they freak out and go, oh, 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 an IRA owns this, we don't know what to do, call our law firm. We're building a new network this coming year of CPAs around the country that can help do these types of tax returns, as well as our accounting firm, sister company can do that. We also, the law firm's doing these nine, nine, or, the, we'll come to nine nineties, but these ten sixty fives have to be done by an accounting firm. So, yeah, get, get them done. Yeah, and so for most of you that have the single member IRA LLC, your IRA owns it one hundred percent. Disregarded entity, don't worry about the tax return. Just make sure you're keeping it up to date and active with the state. Agree. All right, I want to hit two other common areas people have screwed this up and misused them, and there happens to be tax court cases on these. Okay, well, hold it. You're on number six. We may be done. This one you did number two. I'm just, this is kind this of, off, you're ad-libbing? This is the you solo part. so hard I'm to like, like cheat off you. Okay. I'm soloing now. Okay, okay, are you doing? We're just freestyling, you know? It's like, I'm in, we're at the club, you know? The blues are going. And mm, sorry, we're riffing. Yeah, we're riffing. I just can riffing here. You're riffing here. Okay. okay, number six, this one? Okay. Yeah. Or you've got a new one, you're riffing. I don't even know what we're on, but. Well, operating um, wrong. Okay. All right, here's a two things people have done where they've operated wrong. All right, we'll do. Wrongly. <laughs> Something. Incorrectly. Incorrectly. I don't know what the word right. is. Okay. All right. You use that word wrongly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> We're both <laughs> jacked up. All right. Little vocabulary joke. Yeah. All right. Um, first one. Don't pay yourself from this thing. Mm. All right. Now, when we talked at the beginning about one of the restrictions and having it set up right, in your operating agreement, when it gets to the manager and salary section, which is in every operating agreement, it's going to say... You can't take a salary if you're the manager of your own IRA LLC, which is what most people do. They're going to be the manager, but you can't take a salary. 
Okay, you don't get to pay yourself. Now, there's a guy that, there's lots of people that have tried this. There's a guy that got audited. His name was Ellis. He had an IRA LLC. He was paying himself like 30 grand a year. Oh, my gosh. He got the tax court, obviously the IRS challenged it. IRS won in tax court, pretty cut and dry. This is in like 2011. He appealed, 2013, lost again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he didn't get that. And now it's nice because now we have a clear cut case to tell clients, no, 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 you really can't do this. We've told you you can't do it. <laughs> no, 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 now there's a case. Don't be like this guy, Ellis. Because if you have this prohibited transaction, your whole account gets distributed. And that's what happened to him. So avoid paying yourself a salary. There's a clear cut case on that Ellis versus commissioner. And I, I am going to say, we could probably do a whole podcast just on operating poorly because it's almost a mirror image of the prohibited transaction right, yeah. <laughs> podcast, <laughs> yeah. so, which is in our top 20 first podcast we recorded. Please go back and listen to it. If you haven't, you can see it in our history and watch those. And we've done updates over the years. So just watch, listen to or watch on YouTube the podcast regarding prohibited transaction because that's what it's really about. Like what can you can and cannot do? And when you're operating this LLC, you want to just remind yourself of all those. Probably the most common, I like what Matt just said, is people pulling out money to pay for the board meeting, to pay for your cell phone, to pay yourself. You can't do that. And yeah. and we go through, you know, letting the real estate be rented by one of your kids or your mom, you know. So just maintain the LLC properly and follow the rules and don't try to circumvent those rules with the LLC. Yeah. Yeah. And the last example I was just going to give is there's where there's another case on it. This is McNulty versus commissioner. This is someone using the IRA LLC, but they were buying precious metals and they wanted to hold the precious metals and store mm -hmm. them at their house. Well, there's a rule for IRAs that says you can't do that, that the precious metals must be stored in a specific way. Storing them at home does not count. Well, using an IRA LLC is not going to get around that rule. And that's what they were trying to do in that case of McNulty versus commissioner. So um, and that case caused a ton of confusion out there. So just keep in mind, operate it properly. Know that the rules that apply to the IRA are going to apply to the IRA LLC. And all the stuff we talk about, like Mark said, about prohibited transactions and things like that, that's for your IRA LLC too. So color in the lines. Don't get too creative just because you've got the loaded gun, so to speak, you got to be careful about what you're doing with it. You are in control. You really are. You have the, you're in the driver's seat. You can decide what's happening. So, um, so be careful, make sure you're keeping in mind these, these items. Now I want to say this. I don't, I hate like going over all the negative stuff. The I real see is so powerful. It, is. it really allows you to have greater control to do deals that sometimes your IRA custodian can't process fast enough. Yeah. Um, it simplifies things for you. When you're buying real estate at a title company, they understand XYZ Investments LLC. A lot of times, we're, and, you know, they can, we help them. We take care of it if they're buying it directly in your IRA. But it just makes your life easier. And so, um, but just know you got to stick color within the lines. Keep in mind these rules and these common mistakes. Don't fall into the traps. I love it. Were you going to riff a number seven? Or we well, seven, seven was kind of that precious metals one. Oh, okay. Which is, we, we can live with operating. Yeah. I, um... I would say as a final just takeaway then, there's our six common mistakes for IRA LLCs. You'll see those listed down in the description as well. Uh, please get back to some other podcasts of ours on these different topics because we kind of piece and parted all these previously in different podcasts. So you yeah. can really kind of put some meat on the bones here, if you will, with these this, this short list. But I would just add this point. People, you're the captain of your own ship. If you want to self-direct your IRA, you can't do, use a turnkey mentality um, that I'm just going to set up the account, go do this, and then just sit back and it's going to work out. You, The beauty of self-directing is all the things you can do. But if there is a con, it means you have to be engaged. You have to know what, yeah. what's going on. You can't just turn a blind eye and think it's going to be okay. The IRS does not take the excuse of, oh, I didn't know. Ignorance is not a defense. And so go in with your eyes wide open. Pay for the initial console, get it done right with a lawyer that knows what they're doing and say, okay, what are my boundaries? What are the rules? Here's what I want to accomplish. Make sure it's set up. And then please come out to the events we hold. We're going to be holding our semi-annual directed IRA summit. It's coming up in just a month, October 20th and 21st. You can watch virtually. You can get the recordings. You can uh, come attend in person. It's going to be in Phoenix. It's going to be awesome. we got some great things planned. Yeah, lots of cool speakers, people talking about 
We have some of our bigger self-directed investors that are going to be there talking about how they've grown their accounts and the practical strategies they've done. And these are some of the clients that I've loved talking to over the years. And when I'm like helping them strategize from the IRA side and what they can and can't do, I'm always learning from them about what the heck they're doing in their deal (laughs) to make money. So lots of great lessons. And we had one of them at the real estate tax summit that people really loved um, learning from him. So um, so we're going to be having sessions like that. Of course, teaching what you can and can't you, do. You, just what makes me upset is every one of you that's a customer of ours and the mar- large majority of our listeners of our podcast are customers of Directed IRA. They figured out, hey, these guys know what they're doing. One-stop shop. They've got the law firm there. Accounting firm is needed. Every one of our clients should be coming to the summit. And you may think, well, I already learned it all. No, do you know, when we prep for the summit, I'm always like, oh my gosh, that's a new case or... I never knew that, Matt, and I'm yeah. doing my slides. There is always a new golden nugget. I loved it. William Stuckey was at our yeah. real estate tax yeah, summit in Austin. CPA out of Texas. And he goes, I'm like, William, I love that you're here. And he goes, Mark, I've heard you give your spiel 10 times. But every time I come, there's always a golden nugget. There's always something there that you've learned recently or whatever. And I walk away and the whole thing's worth it. And I there was something occurred. It was about halfway through the first day. He's like... Bam, paid for the whole trip. And so if you're a customer of ours at Directed IRA, sign up for the damn summit. Come in person, (laughs) get on the virtual, just do it. And it can be a tax deduction in your personal business life if you have a small business because you're coming for financial and business education. Make sure you're writing that off in your small business. You can't write it off in your IRA LLC. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If you've been listening today. But you can write that off in your business. Get here, come, and learn. And associate and learn from these speakers that are blowing up their IRAs into millions. Yeah. John shared that in person. He's yeah, like, yeah. I've done million-dollar deals. Yeah, and one deal that made over a million dollars. Yeah, you know? he's going to be speaking just, at the done, event. He's done 50 of those guys, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's. we'd love to see you there. Um, and just being around other like-minded investors uh, makes it all the more enjoyable too. Yeah. Cause it's, it's your tribe guys. It's your people. Yeah. They're doing what you're doing. The majority, I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here. That's an, a, a little analogy I used on our other podcast the other day, but <laughs> I mean, we don't hold our summit or our monthly webinars to get new clients. Primarily we don't, we have other marketing ways to get the word out and we're speaking on other people's stages and all that sort of thing. These events and their monthly webinar is to help you, the customer, because you're going to have and you're going to have questions. It's like you don't know what you don't know. And so when you get on our website and we have education material, sign up for it. Back to the point, you are the captain of your ship. And so uh, these events are you're not you may thinking, oh, these are all newbies going. No, some of our most successful clients are there for a reason yeah. so they can get better at what they're doing. Yeah. Sorry, I just had to say it one more time. I love it. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Well, we are going to be back with another amazing episode of the Directed IRA podcast. Get over to directedira.com slash podcast with your questions, though, because we're going to be having an open forum episode here in a week or two. So you can submit your questions there. We filled them. And uh, and it's a great opportunity for you to just the questions that pop up as you're watching our episodes. Oh, yeah. Just, Other people like, I never thought of that question. In. Yeah, we love hitting those. That's what yeah. that's what that's all about. Yeah. No, and I mean, just listening into other people's questions can be very insightful. Yeah. People all the time are like, what? I never even thought of that. And, yeah. and you know, and it's one of our most popular episodes. So yeah. thanks everybody. And we'll see you uh, next week.